preparing live stream. I'm just going to check on here. I can trim it for the old. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. Oh, yeah, we've got the gormless bit where we're looking at it because it pays life. <laughs> That's how you know it's live, the little little gormlet. <laughs> That's how you know when there's a couple of people being pillocks on there that you know you're live, don't you? <laughs> but we are most definitely live. Um, we're definitely a live, which is also good. I'm watching myself from about 30 seconds ago and you and me when we go, oh, we're live. It's marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, we are definitely here. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm having a funny five minutes and so is Jenny, but then that's nothing new. That's nothing new at all. So let me. Oh, we're being live streamed. I got it. Right now I'm back to my to my Zoom and I'm in time with me. My hair is now in time with what it's doing. Look at that bit on top. <laughs> <laughs> so it is so lovely to have talking with my goddess back, isn't it? thank you well I think so and um yeah people there's quite a few people popped by last week and people got it on just getting my phone up with me um just make sure it's on silent because like I said we, we never need two of me or you to be fair one of us is enough isn't it well it, it's quite the uh, the bounty isn't it and to have both of us together on a, a Sunday morning is just like luxury but you wouldn't want four that would be too much Luxury. Now that that's a way of putting it. Oh yes, we're definitely live now. But I can't get up. Oh, it's doing the marvelous thing where it, it um it says what we're saying. Oh okay. Yeah, so we should say some really strange words and see if the, <laughs> if the robots can keep up. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're only a few seconds behind, so that's awesome. So yeah, so good morning, everybody. Me and Jenny are just having a being silly. We're just being Claire and Jenny, aren't we? It's just one of those things. So, right, so let me get my arm out of the way and, and my boobs out of the way. It's always a kerfuffle. Nothing goes to plan, does it? <laughs> but it never does. So, good morning, everybody. For those of you that are still braving us after we've... Good morning, Sarah. How are you? Sarah George. Good Lovely morning, Sarah. Sarah. Good morning, yes. Um, so, today, myself and Jenny are going to be talking about pagan camps, festivities, gatherings, get-togethers, the joy of them, idiots buying too much petrol, that means we can't get to them, and uh, all of the things in between. So obviously most of you have already met lovely, lovely Jenny. For those of you that don't know her, um, this is the lovely Jenny Luddington. Uh, oh, good morning, Lonnie, as well. Sarah's good, and Lonnie is here. Hail and blessings, sisters. Hail and blessings to you, brother Lonnie. Um, so, Jenny tell everybody that doesn't know you a little bit about you right so i facilitate the kent goddess group and that's a women's ceremonial group and um, we meet um on sunday nearest the sabbats usually and i also with our very good friend the lovely hazel do the wheel podcast and we do that once weekly, it usually goes out on a Sunday tea time and we started it as a lockdown project and it's it's grown exponentially mm. and surprised us. We thought it would be six of our friends and my mum listening and it, it, it's, we have listeners in 46 countries. It's amazing, it's like, isn't it? And I still haven't quite worked out if it's people using a VPN or if we really do have six listeners in sweden what's a vpn i don't know we'd have to ask your son but it's the oh, okay. thing that covers up your what's it when you're looking at stuff so well i was thinking of visible panty line for a minute and i thought I don't... <laughs> <laughs> we could do one where we're just sitting in our pants and just peeping over the top with our eyes couldn't we but that yeah so vpn <laughs> anybody know what vpn is pop in a sarah you probably know Oh, Sue's here as well. Morning, Sue. Lou's here. Good morning, Lou. And Emma, good morning, my darlings. Yes, yeah, Sue, what's a VPN? Put us out of our misery before we... Um, there's a, oh, and now my husband's phoning because he's been away on a camp. Go away, trucker. I can't talk to you now. I'm live. <laughs> anyway, so that's the lovely Jenny and the, the Wheel podcast. If you haven't picked it up yet, I would completely recommend 
it's um you talk to some amazing people and like you say you expect yeah virtual private network thank you sarah <laughs> sarah is um an amazing uh, it wonder and um i've i've spoken to sarah uh yeah that was the trucker the trucker was the trucker was trying to phone me but it wasn't happening um yeah sarah i spoke to on my celebrancy page about digital storage so yeah she's a she's a wonder if uh miss george if you need miss george then then i can let you know if you if you need a an it wonder anyway back oh, now i've got a voice from the trucker <laughs> probably telling me on his way back from colchester hanging so there you go <laughs> Anyway, back to the lovely Jenny. Chaos ensues. It's, it's you, Jenny. It's you. Podcast in oh, pants. That. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> Sarah, would you like to join us for that one, my darling? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, Jenny, so, um, obviously, like, we, you and I, we first met at a, a pagan moot, didn't we? Yes, we did. Many, many moots ago. We met uh, our Folkestone Pagan Circle, didn't we, when that was up and running? We did indeed. And I'd never clapped eyes on her before. And I thought, this person seems like fun. And that was quite a few years ago. And um, Fiona was here as well. She thought of VPL too. Good old girl. Well done, <laughs> Fee. <laughs> Fiona, who I met at the, the circle as well. So, so that's where we met. And that's, you know, we're quite some way away. We're about 40 miles apart, aren't we? Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I'll go. And I'd been chatting to them online, I think, and went down there. But we, from there, we've joined into other various groups and we <clears throat> sort of mix and match in our areas, don't we? But, you know, the importance of being together, I think during lockdown, we did an awful lot of stuff on Zoom. And this, this itself came up from Zoom, didn't it? And like you said, your podcast yeah. was born of lockdown, as this was, of like wanting to... Um, you know connect with people um and and just have that conversation that you were missing sitting around whether it was in a pub garden whether it was in a little hall whether it was in a a little and it's a cellar one stage we used to meet in didn't we like yeah, a, a shop cellar we, we, and that was amazing we we did some amazing things in there with laura's um it was, we were having like a bit of an om circle with various goddesses weren't we when she we was doing chanting her, the name to the goddess yeah, and we when she was doing her priestess training absolutely amazing didn't we <laughs> and it was recorded and we listened back to it and it was like geez that's bad but literally <laughs> in that moment in that circle calling in the names of goddess yes it was a magical mystical experience it was but i think it shows you that some things can't be captured Definitely. on a digital medium like they've got to be experienced in the moment yeah and that's the thing that you know digital is great and this is great and you know there's seven of you right now listening to me and jenny have a have a little chat you know it's just <laughs> we're just you're just you know sort of you know joining in and uh, eavesdropping on two lunatics having a little chat about but you know the whys and wherefores of the world on a sunday morning and that's fabulous but there is some definitely something to be said for physical emotional and spiritual meetings that are in person aren't they so like we said about this this where we were all chanting those names it was a real moment you could feel that energy building the recording of it sounded like I've been told a bunch of strangled cats and I can well believe it <laughs> so what um and over the years Jenny and I have been to many uh, um a gathering together haven't we yeah and we've been to big professional organized ones where you buy a ticket um and we've been to sort of middle of the range ones where they're starting up as a festival and we, <coughs> excuse me and we've been to our own ones that we've basically arranged as our own moots our own moots of so sort of, let's let's all go away for summer let's let's have a weekend away camping and we've literally pitched a tent and turned up and run our own workshops so which one was give us some of the examples of some of your favorite experiences at camp jenny because there must be many and you must have seen my beautiful picture of jenny this morning just <laughs> as a butterfly at the mercy and gathering a few years ago well i mean the first camp that i started going to and that was via my friend jackie um is the mercy and gathering which is up in nuneaton and I have really missed that because it was my kind of pause at the end of summer and the beginning of autumn. So a lot of you guys that know me know that I work in education. So September is 
just absolutely manic welcoming new students and getting everybody sorted so that used to really fortify me before starting my next academic year it's strange for people who do work in education this is like new year for us Mm. so it's a time to start over and to start afresh but the Mercian has always been kind of at that spiritual pause, that break. So it kind of falls in that first weekend of September. So you've just passed um, the, oh, what festival had we just passed? Lammas. Yeah, you just passed Lammas. Sorry, epilepsy brain is still kicking <laughs> in. And you're not quite at the autumn equinox. So it's that pause in between. And as you know, I love liminal kind of times and spaces Mm. and uh, you know I think at its height it had about 500 people uh, and then they had a bit of a rethink and scaled things down because it was getting a little bit big and it was getting a little bit festively and they took a year out and then they came back to basics because it is about you know worshipping the old gods you know, there are a few stalls and things, but there's no kind of like food trucks or anything. No. It's not big. It's not commercial. It's there about are samosas. Coming, there are samosas in the food tent. <laughs> and uh, Claire does like a samosa, as you all well know. But so many ways of sort of co-creating ritual. The very first time that I went, they had like a querning tent. And you could all take turns grinding some grain. And then they obviously, they have a great big wicker man that gets burnt on the Saturday night. And we're all running around it, chanting. And then when he falls down, people are jumping over him. And I'd been quite a few years in a row and not jumped because of my, my epilepsy and my uh, neurological conditions and I remember talking to a guy who's their official photographer called Dennis and I'd oh, explained yeah. why I couldn't do it and he said wait wait yeah and he went away and he talked to the Dagda who are like a um, in-house security for the event and <laughs> they turned around and they said no you can do it he said wait until it dies right down low somebody will walk with you and you'll just jump over the end and that was the first time that I had let the wicker man and I just left all of that worry about my my physical and my mental health and stuff and just jumped over it and I you know I felt for me personally that was a real turning point in my recovery after I'd had a breakthrough seizure in sort of like 2012 it yeah. really really helped me to feel like I was leaping into something new and leaving something else behind but the the caliber of the speakers that we've had mm. is it's absolutely amazing and um you know some of the people that we've met have since come on and been guests on the podcast Mm -hmm. and there is a real sense of community and one of the things I think I love most about camping is you would go and you would have your mobile phone and then I know you can get battery charges and stuff now but you didn't when we first started camping so after that first day that was it yeah you were out of contact you were unreachable And we very seldom do this unless we consciously think, right, I'm taking a bit of a digital detox. I'm having a little break from social media or stuff. And we're not meant to live like this. No, no. We it's it's interesting you say that because, you know, when we've been to we've been to Roots, which we talk about in a minute. But I would turn my phone onto calls only and camera because mine, you can choose which icons will get through. So the battery would last because obviously when you've got children, you want to be contactable in case there's obviously, you know, Mark's here and my parents are around. But at the same time, when I first started going to things, they were still at home and might have wanted me. And, you know, um, in case of emergency, they would be able to phone if there was an emergency. But I, I didn't have my literally had my, my phone out to take pictures. And that was it. Mm-hmm. And it is so freeing. And then I remember turning it on on the way back home. And it's only a short drive. It literally went ping, 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 ping for about five minutes. And I thought, my God. And I didn't. It was none of that was desperate information I needed to have. It was all Facebook or Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was all those things that. You get so, oh, I better check that. It, 
it wasn't important in the general scheme of things it really really wasn't important and that frees you up to spend that time doing what you need to do and it's 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 shocking how much time we do spend on there so we've digressed a bit but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that you say about the mercy and we saw Dave the Bard at the mercy didn't we and it's always so intimate isn't it oh god it was brilliant it, his his um his warm-up song was um comfortably numb and he said I can't he, he couldn't reach the high notes he said but one of the guys anyway and it was I love that song and it was one of the best I remember being completely we were a bit starstruck where we would be like Dave the Bard oh my god and we were like waving our arms and, and you just sing and he really freed you up to get them out and I actually got up and danced sober do you know what I mean I was like that doesn't happen very often do you know? <laughs> Usually, it's, usually there's a few drinks involved before I start bopping around and dancing. But it was it was amazing, and that we're all in that big tent listening to um, music, and it, you know it wasn't just it wasn't just Dave. It was all the all the talks, and we met so like you say some fabulous people. And I mean, I did sit in one thinking I was listening to something else. I thought it's got nothing to do with it, and I was in the wrong tent. Uh, yeah, the mercy and for all pagan paths, Emma. Yeah, it's not just for one. It's not just for goddess worship or. Hellenic reconstruction, as uh, Jenny would say, or Drew, it's for, it's for whoever. I don't actually know Anna who runs it. I don't know what her path is, but yeah, anyone with, um, anyone can go. Well, they because they scaled back, you have to sort of know somebody who's going. But yeah, it, it, it was, it's definitely a, a multi, multi path, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, there's people that I meet that I only ever meet at the Mercian. And, you know, there's loads of Kent Pagans. It's like, hello, Rochester Pagans. Hello, Maidstone Pagans. And yes. stuff like that. So, you know, we Kent is very well represented at the Mercian. Isn't it strange? I, I just think it's because it's such a good camp. People will travel that kind of distance. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just absolutely amazing. And it just restores me before mm. I go into that next, this, this kind of dark half of the year. Um, you know I feel rebalanced and it's you know absolutely and I take a, a friend with me quite often who isn't pagan at all uh, but it's her only kind of break in the year and you know sometimes she just sleeps because she's got caring responsibilities but it's exactly what she needs it to be mm -hmm. for her and you know you can participate as much or as little as you like but yeah. as I said the caliber of the speakers is always so high um I'm gonna have terrible um epilepsy brain for the moment but what's the name of the lady who does the the talk as a medicine woman um is it Alice something the cunning woman yes and oh just she's amazing absolutely yes, amazing she is, and she does it yeah. completely in character and she says yeah. well i'm not she's because she's not witch, is she no nope. agnes and she sort of says if agnes, God that's it. that you should die then so be it yeah but there are some things that i can do and just the knowledge that she has and kind of the herbal walks all of the rituals it really is a fantastic camp yeah Definitely. And, um, you know, the sort of, and that's one of the bigger ones, isn't it? But we've been to a smaller one, but it's not running now, but that was Roots, wasn't it? Which was, <laughs> that was fabulous. We, we made broomsticks, didn't we? we? We saw a hand fasting, didn't we? We saw a hand fasting. We had a go at dowsing, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah, that was a very good, sadly, the gentleman that, um, ran it him and his partner split up and he's he's actually since passed away um he's, he's gone to the summer lands i think he had a viking um viking coffin which was which was awesome um that, that's really really sad but there was all sorts going on there and that was that was a back to basics thing that was really these are sort of places where you have just got toilets don't be thinking about showers and super duper things this is where you get down and dirty and i think i don't know about you but that making a cup of tea in the morning over oh. your little stove is a really grounding experience, isn't it? Well, I think it, it slows you down, doesn't it? Because you can only take the water that you can carry from the, the stockpipe sort of thing. Yeah. You're not wasting lots of things. You're probably waking up earlier to birdsong and you're probably going to bed. Um, as Not as the sun sets, because we're up around the campfire, but, you know... At home, I can be up online till two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Well, you can't really do that at camp. 
sort of thing. You right. haven't got those kind of facilities. So you are going back to your kind of circadian rhythms. Mm. And, and know, that's... That, that, I, I, the, the thing I love most about camping is just going around in your pyjamas. You'd never dream of going around to Tesco's, you know, in your pyjamas. People do. People well, do. People do. We, we, we've got to get with normally, the 21st century, Jen, and go to Tesco's in our pyjamas. I've never done that. Never, I ever done that. Probably not. And, um, yeah, it's just that opportunity to slow right down and not have that 24-7 electric lights pinging disconnect and it's reconnecting to the things that really matter i remember two of my favorite roots memories are you dressing up as the black dog and weren't you only the second person to have worn that costume yeah yeah I've, we, we've um it was like a, a hood and horse wasn't it it was a uh, um i'll find some photos <laughs> <laughs> Jen Hazel and Jidge made sure there were plenty of photos of me dressed up. We'd gone to it was one of this talk was about the history of hood and horses, and they're like, is it you know, um, Emma, if you're still watching, you know, like the Mary Lloyd thing in Wales, the it's like a horse, and people sort of dress up. It, it's kind of it's like a, a pagan pantomime horse in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so there are some pictures of me blooming heavy and blooming hot and horrible. I wouldn't want you to have to have worn that. Love the sound of mercy. I want to start saving for next year. Yeah, Fia, you'd you'd really enjoy it. Um, and it's yeah, that but so yeah, me dressed as a black dog. Yeah, it was it was a hood and horse black dog. If that doesn't make sense, but it will when you see the pictures. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that, Jen. <laughs> interesting story that the, the they had photos of the costume and then it got lost and then it was rediscovered in a mm. barn sort of like 50 years later yeah. and Claire was the second person ever to have worn it and that was absolutely amazing and they would gave a really good talk about um black dog in folklore and mythology sort of mm. thing so you know lots of folkloric stories about black dog and it being you know a, a portent or an omen but it was absolutely yeah. fascinating and then my second favorite memory of roots was somehow I attracted a little posse of girls <laughs> who kept dragging us up to dance and I got told off for encouraging them but they didn't need much encouragement they were beautiful fiery maidens and they kept dragging us up to dance and we had a whale of a time yeah that was yeah we did yeah and it's that it's that um and this was a family both it was a family friendly one wasn't it Ruth so Fiona likes their gone to the Summerlands phrase yeah well yeah that was that was his that was his terms that his words as well bless his heart but I, I do like that yeah um and the, the, I think the thing is like you uncharge from digital stuff and you recharge your emotional and spiritual batteries and your people batteries and like I mean, I'm still in contact with people that I met there sort of four years ago. And the Mercian, Kath, I still talk to Kath. And I met her once for one weekend. And um, they, her and her friends had a tent in front of us, didn't they? Do you remember? Yeah. And we just got chatting and we still chat now. And she, she knows other people I know from doing exactly the same thing before <laughs> in other places. And with the Mercian, the, the, sorry, with Roots, there are people that I've been... It, it ran three times, three separate years. And I went every time with different people and I just connected with different people and chatted to different people and you get a different experience. But it's, is there something about being with like-minded people where you don't have to explain yourself? Mm. You can tell people about yourself. If you haven't got to explain, I mean, as long as nobody starts seeing case, sarah, sarah, because I will freak out because we, <laughs> we had, <laughs> we were sat around the campfire and there were a couple and they um they both liked to sing and they 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 sang K Sara Sara to each other, which was not as romantic as it sounds. It really, really wasn't, was it? No. Well, I was saying when I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Well, Jen, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I think my exact one. A huh? bit of our mythic culture. Well, and, it has. Know, this is the thing. History is that whenever we're now around a campfire, 
we've got you know case and rasa that we sing but also it's um, not, it's... <laughs> the jurassic park song which oh. is the song of our answer <laughs> we said with the case of rasa we sat there and i went i'll tell you what if they start singing kumbaya i'm off fly me 30 seconds later come by and I'm like right we're off and it was this group exodus and there's just them sat by the fire and I'm just like but then when we had our um our Mason pagans um this is the third year we've done it as well is we've had um uh we call I call it the we, we've named it the um summer's last hurrah because it's around the same time as the Mercian and um that's uh, nearby Kingswood, and it's this beautiful, really rustic glamping place. Isn't it glorious there? It's just, it's just lovely, and it really is absolutely glorious. And we we actually sat around the fire, and Jenny and I told this story about Kesara and Kumbaya to our friends at Maston Pagans, and we ended up singing Kesara and Kumbaya. <laughs> and every, it was just, it's become one of those standing jokes, isn't it? But she said about the Jurassic Park thing and another retreat, it was supposed to be, a, well, I say a serious retreat, it was never going to be a serious retreat, but eight of us went went away, eight ladies went away on what we called a moon a moon retreat, didn't we? Yeah. And um, we ended up making up a song about Jurassic Park. Didn't, oh, no, we didn't make it up, we found it, didn't we? Yes. Um, and it's become... It's, 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 quick, it's so funny how it quickly becomes part of your culture. Oh, oh, she's got her dinosaurs. A dino dress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of you've seen there's a comedian and he puts um songs about like the synopsis of the film to the theme tune and um in this particular one it was about Jurassic Park so it's oh no what's this and it is it's Jurassic Park. It's a massive. I won't go on, but it was, <laughs> and we. Did, it became a, the song of our ancestors. A really stupid thing, but it's so funny how things become part of your, a part of your memories and part of your traditions so quickly. You just wonder how many times the hood and horse came out before it became a thing that you have to do every year. Yeah, you know. Oh, we did that last year. Let's do that again, kind of thing. And that's the thing, you know, I, I don't think a tradition has to be ancient to have value. No, definitely. You know, we are a living, breathing, vibrant tradition. And I love the idea that maybe in 50 or 60 years, our ancestors will be looking down at our old books of shadows or the old, old videos. and that, that. Can you remember the ancient dinosaur song that our grandmothers <laughs> used to sing? And, and, and somebody said, I hope yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's just appeared. Hello, Gary. He's probably thinking, why are they talking about dinosaurs? What's going on? And is, why is Jen flashing her boobs in a dinosaur dress? I don't know what's going on. Hi, bright blessings to you all and double trouble here. Mm, yes, Gary. <laughs> Uh, definitely so um because obviously today we were going to be going i don't think you were coming were you no but we were um mason lot we're going to be going over on a walk but it's over at sheppey and of course with the petrol situation we've had to cancel that because i've got i'm about to go on to the red and i need to get to work next week and i'm not going to sit in a queue when i don't need to and a lot of other people are in the same position and it's just so we haven't done it but it's real there's a real sense of disappointment of not meeting up with those people um we kind of we put up with it for so long and now we've got over it and we're used to meeting people again and it's kind of really it's really um an unpleasant sensation to not be able to see them again i mean this is yeah. just because of the petrol thing but um so i mean the groups you run i mean for example the kent goddess group um you know what what are the things that you particularly get out of that that kind of interaction with people because I think that's the thing that obviously we're talking on a big scale and celebrating the seasons because there's I mean I always do summer solstice with um Pagan Pathways Rochester uh, and we were we could do it this year because it's camping because it was outside and there were less than 30 of us we got away with it Maybe we can do a chant for some petrol. That's a really cool idea. Or just the queues to store. I think that's the thing. There is petrol. There's plenty of blooming petrol. Just, you know. Um, but it's so the, the summer solstice one is kind of um that's become 
a thing that I must do. Yeah. And I've only done it four times. Four times, but it's, it's quickly become ingrained in my must do things of the year. And it's part of my summer solstice um, ritual now. And in just four years, and Fiona's saying, I hear that reconnection is so needed right now. It's almost like we've restarted. We get upset easily if we can't do it. Yeah, exactly, Fiona, yeah. that, you know, you're thinking, well, I can do this. And then it's kind of like a, as it's a kick in the teeth, isn't it? Emotionally and spiritually that you can't get back out and, and do things. And we know it's a temporary blip. Um, and the roads are chaos, so I thought, well, let's not add to it. Let's not. If it's going to take me an hour and a half to get to, well, I wouldn't get there. <laughs> if I was just driving straight there, I'd get there. But sitting in traffic, I, I will use up all the petrol, you know. So, what is it about the, the, you know, the groups that you belong to that you feel you get from the connections and the the interacting with other people? Because that's what it is. At the end of the day, isn't it? Well, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. I will always be grateful for Zoom for mm. keeping us connected through the lockdown. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to be keeping some stuff on Zoom because yeah. I think what it's made people think about is those people whose normal is this, not being able to yes. get out, not being able yeah, to socialise, not being able to celebrate the, the will with other people so I think we're going to learn a lot from this and take away a lot about making sure that we include people who cannot get out and about as easily as others so I am grateful for that but that said meeting in person it, it's just that little bit easier so it's like for the autumn equinox we did a lovely little grounding ritual where I bought lots of different red coloured um, stones so we used that almost divination relate to okay. pick a stone. And then we looked at that meaning and what did that represent for us in our lives at this moment? And it was, as these things are, spot on for everybody. Then after that, we did um, some tincture mating. So oh, we'd had yes. a chance to do that when we were away at um summer's last hurrah camp that yeah. claire runs uh, the lady who owns the camps oh. campsite is a very um incredible knowledgeable very knowledgeable she was amazing wasn't she really yeah. really amazing yeah herbalist and like a lot of these things we learn something new at camp and then we go away and we share that knowledge with other people. So I've always maintained, haven't I, Claire, that education is a lot like a sexually communicable disease. It leaves you unfit for a lot of jobs and with the urge to pass it on. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. I took some of the learning that I'd done at camp and I shared that with the Kate Goddess group sort of thing. So we were all making... Um, hedgerow tincture so everybody bought something so the lovely tony bought um rose hips and nice. elderberries and all sorts of things um other people bought garden herbs like sage and rosemary and stuff and you know you had that all we're all bringing something to the table and we're all taking something and we, we all made our tinctures i brought the vodka and the little cute jars sort of thing and to sit there and people brought their books so it's that coming together it's that sharing that energy and i also think when you make something as a group like that you're also imbuing it with the energy of that gathering definitely so when we were away at summer's last hurrah we were all gathering herbs on the wall yeah. but i've now got a smoke cleansing bundle that i made up the time that's got yeah. rosemary and mugwort in it and calendula and echinacea and that's all bundled up now and that will be drying for the next six weeks but that's going to be my last little bit of summer. So in the middle of the coldest, darkest part of the year, I'm going to be able to light that um, smoke bundle and I'm going to connect to you guys mm. and summer and all those energies. And if I'm having a tough time and if I'm honest, I can have a tough time in the, yeah. uh, the autumn. That's just something to remind me that summer's going to come again. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting you said about the... The sharing of knowledge, the sharing. And I find um, 
a it's comforting like you said about it, it connects you with people and like you know if you're having a tough time it'll be like oh but I had this good time here I find it inspiring as well because sometimes you get even if you don't get um uh Oh, sorry. Jenny, did you just say echinacea? Yeah. Is it from your garden? No, it was from the camp we were at, um, Fee. There was a, the lady, um, Laura, who runs Well Summer. Um, yeah, she's got she's got a herb garden, so it was from there. Uh, you can't go around and raid Jenny's house for echinacea. <laughs> you can try, but you won't get very far. Um, but the you don't even need to be stuck to be able to be inspired by what somebody else is doing. So if you think about all the things, unless you follow a particular strict path, which is fine, if that's what you want to do, if you follow a very prescribed path, um, which if that's what you really want to do, each to their own. But most of us are quite eclectic in our, in our beliefs and our paths. So you might pick something up like we did with the um, at Roots with the divining. We've started we've started doing that haven't we you know mm -hmm. we we'd never done it before and this guy just showed me we're like wow that's amazing um and like with you know the herbal tinctures that laura showed us oh fiona was going to ask for a few seeds <laughs> that's all i'll find some um you, you know to be told to be shown that is something that you think well i can do that at home as long as you know what you're doing you know you you, you can do that can't you it's it's not a problem um and it's picking up we've done crystals before we've done tarot we've done Oh, yes. Do you remember my, my unbalancing? We do. And we again, do. part of our legend and our law. Part, it is part of our legend. And of course, um, Fred the Bat. Is this an appropriate moment to talk about Fred the Bat? I think Fred should always be. It's never inappropriate to talk about Fred. Mm. We'll come back to Fred and that my unbalanced growl very shortly. But, um, you know, you pick these things up and you think, you try things and think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a go. And that's how you learn things. Mark's trying to phone again now, and then he's the house phone's going. Sophie's going to say she's on, she's live. Leave her alone, Dad. Um, but you, do, you do, you pick things up that you might, you might think, well, it is part of the price, or it's included. I'll go and have a look. Whereas you might not pay for a workshop because if you've, we've all got, all only got so many pennies to spend as well. So it's, it is a marvelous way to share and inspire and and all that, isn't it? So, yeah, the um, we. <laughs> This is so shameful. I wonder if there's a connection between Fred and your run. Well, Fred and my unbalanced ground. Well, Fred has to be included in the discussion. All right, cheers. Cheers, Sue. Cheers, Fiona. For those of you that don't know, a couple of years ago, we were at Folkestone Pagan Camp, weren't we? Yep. Would you like to tell the story? Do you, should I tell them about Fred? About Fred. I'll start with Fred. Well, the day of this camp, we had because it was really hot this year. I had a gazebo at the back of our house because it was so hot that I wanted some shade for the cats. Um, so obviously, this time, you know, in the hot weather, they go out, but you know, some of them are quite old and I wanted them to have shade. And uh, so I went out in the morning to the gazebo, literally at my back door. And so I'd been, you know, getting ready for work and I was going to camp that straight from work I was driving down to to deal we were staying at weren't we Kingswood mm -hmm. and I found what I thought was half a dead bat under my gazebo it was actually a whole bat but all curled up and it was dead and I and I was like oh my goodness you all right so you all right oh uh, so I just checking it was an emergency phone call from my husband We've broken down in cultures to come and get me. Not on a nearly red tank of petrol, I'm not, no. Um, anyway, so, and I thought, well, if I leave it here, the cats are going to maul it. And the ground was so dry, I had no hope of digging um, digging a little grave for him. And of course, as well, I didn't want the cats playing with it because bats can carry rabies. So very carefully, I wrapped him up and put him in a little tissue box. And I thought, I don't know, I'll take him to work and I'll show him to Janine. So Neen isn't watching so far, but Neen um, is, she comes on, you know Neen anyway, don't you? And uh, she, and also I got to work where I was the manager and I turned up with my little bat in its box and um, we put gloves on and we opened his little wings and they, it was a beautiful little thing. He was, he was unharmed apart from a tiny little tear in his wing. And Janine said, I'm so pleased I'm the sort of person you think, did that, I'll take that to show Janine. Anyway, so I'm sitting there thinking, what am I going to do with him? And I went, 
oh, I know what, I'm going to I'm going to camp. I'm going to a pagan camp. So I'll take him with him and we'll cremate him on the fire. There's always a fire at a pagan camp. Um, and one of the other managers come over and I'd got I'd got a whole bag of um drugs, as in medical drugs, <laughs> locked away in this drawer for safekeeping. Some witch's salt and a dead bat. She was just like bloody old warts here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So I took I took this bat who by now had become known as Fred to camp. Got there and um, two lovely ladies were resting in their tent and they'd never met me before. And as I'm saying to the organisers, I've brought a dead bat with me. They both stuck their head out of the tent, going, "Who is this person that's brought a dead bat? We must meet her." And so you know she and um, I'll tell you who it was. It was uh, lovely Kaylee who did the talk on crystals with me, and she later told her mum. We went. Katie, what sort of people are you meeting? <laughs> I was just glaring a dead bat. Anyway, in our excitement, we forgot about Fred the bat the first night. And I have to say, when I opened my car up the next day, it was apparent that things were not well for Fred the bat. He, he needed to be disposed of with dignity quite soon. So that night, Bear in mind, the night before, we'd sung and we'd danced around the campfire, hadn't we? And we would, we'd sung and we'd told stories and we'd drummed and all sorts of things. Nothing exciting had happened, apart from I had a nice time. So we we made a, a flower wheel and a wreath, didn't we, to put on the fire. We put that on and we put the shoe box or the tissue box with Fred in it on top. And we were singing Into the Earth I Go, weren't we? Yep. We were singing that and, um, you know, we'd sort of, you know, let, let Fred go to be with his people or his tribe. And this is no word of a lie. There was a clearing above, like a circle clearing, wasn't there? Because the the tree kind of yeah. And I looked up and I was like, oh, my God. And then no word of a lie. There were a dozen 15 bats flying around, weren't there? And, and they were all circling. Yeah, and if, if you read it in a book, you'd think, yeah, whatever. But yeah, that was so that's the story of Fred the Bat. So we had a marvellous send-off, even though or they were like thinking, why are you burning our friend? I, I don't know. But it was it was a really beautiful send-off for him, wasn't it? I really just thought about this, Claire. It probably marked the start of you beginning your celebrant's journey. Yeah. I suppose it so did. Whether that was some sort of sign or, or, or portent, I don't know. But when you think about what you do now and transitioning people over. How bizarre. That's I, I've not thought about that. I do have the lovely um, bat necklace that Jenny sent me for my 50th <laughs> earlier this year. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. I really hadn't thought about it. Yeah, Emma's things. gone, wow. And honestly, if you... You know, you you hear things like that, and you think, yeah, like that would happen. But this this genuinely happened, and we were all just absolutely amazed by it, weren't we? But yeah, that's true. That is true. It might. It's. Uh, I think bats are portents of death as well, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look into that. You're gonna have to look into the symbolism of bats, aren't you? I am. So that was Fred, and then we've already mentioned Kaylee, and Kaylee knows a lot about crystals. She's been on the wheel, and I know she's been on Walking with My Goddess, yeah. and talked about crystals. But we were trying to balance our chakras, and we found out that quite a lot of the sort of slightly older ladies of the pagan circle were quite unbalanced in our root chakra. And we had this crystal on <laughs> Claire's tummy and it just kept falling off and falling in between her legs. And I think the name, and I'm trying to keep this PG-13, I really am. But oh, it don't worry. But known as Claire's unbalanced growler. <laughs> and again, part of our legend, part of our lore. <laughs> And this, in the end, we decided we needed a tiger's eye the size of a brick to rebalance. But we, we, but it was just, it was just, it, it, it quickly becomes just hysterical. And but we, that was a skill we learned, wasn't it? We, we learned that I'm completely unbalanced and I burn bats. I mean, that's you know, anybody tuning in now's been right. I'm tuning straight back off. by. But you know, it's it's one of those things that stays with you. Mm. Um, and from that, I went and did a little course on crystal healing. Because I thought, yeah, you know, there's something in this. Death also symbolises rebirth, renewal, which you actually, 
which did actually happen for you, Claire, as your celebrant path then opens up. Yeah, it did, Fiona, didn't it? It really yeah. did. It really did. And I, well, I've not thought doing... about it like that before, but <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have to look up what bats mean. Um, but I'm, I is. Yeah, I'm sure it is. There are portents. There are, um, what's the word? Omens, really. But, yeah. but port portents and omens are the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. So, have you got any, anything else you particularly would like to tell us about, Jenny, before we let these well, good people Well, I was just start? thinking about, I know that when you came on to the podcast and we talked about fire, and that yes. being around the fire and oh, that being yes. the thing that kind of may have sparked us developing language. And also within education, we have this thing about see one, do one, show one. And that's the idea of how we learn. Somebody shows us, we have a go at doing it. And then to embed that knowledge, we pass it on. And I think this is the way that our stories, our legends, our law, our skills... Mm get shared with another generation i mean you know we're a very similar age but we've got some amazing younger sort of witches and pagans that are coming and maybe sharing stuff with us mm -hmm. that is is new and different and likewise we may be sending down again stuff that we know so i love gatherings i love a good camp um would love to know where other people go so comment below Mm, um, yeah. camps that you would recommend and I suppose don't be overruled we've gone to some really big ones that are really well organized but if you've got a little moot I know that quite a few new moots are starting up just go away have a little gathering start small it doesn't have to be massive no. you don't need to get all of these noteworthy speakers in you know I've been really glad to have seen some big names to meet speakers and artists over the years but actually what you can learn from each other is just as amazing and that yeah definitely because we've you know whether there's five of you 25 or 105 you can it's that time spent a in a little bit of ritual maybe but also i mean for the um definitely the, the sort of the moot circles the moot camps we've been on you we've taken we've all taken a slot to do something and to share a practice a skill a something with each other for example like kaylee did the, the crystals and she just bought a box of her crystals and told us what they all were we did a little crystal meditation that she'd written and we did the balancing I did some crafts, didn't I? You did some... Um, vision boarding. The vision boarding. Other people's, you know, gift was that they could sing um, or perform a story or what have you. And again, at our um, last hurrah, we, uh, we we did pay the lady who owned the site um, a, a six, six pound each for this. But it was, we were an hour and a half she was with us, wasn't she? And she, she bought the vodka to make the tinctures with. Um, and we... You know, we had people doing, um, engineering did some crystals for Carmel, didn't we? And yep. what else did we do? I can't remember tea. now. Tea. You, you and Hazel did a tea and a tea meditation with fennel tea. I'm not a fan. <laughs> but, you know, before we've, people have done, um, you know, Carmel's bought her crystals and done crystals as well. You know, Tony's a storyteller. Norma did a yoga. Laura did a yoga session, that's right, you know, and we did a we did a walk, and it hasn't got to be sort of super duper all singing or dancing. I, I mean, I've seen authors at like the Mercy and Do talks, and they were they were fantastic, they were brilliant, but equally I've just as much enjoyed sitting down with five friends talking about the tarot or having a cup of tea and looking at tea. When we've done at Moon Circle, were you there when um, Ella did the tea leaf reading? No, I wasn't there for the uh, tea reading. Oh, and she um, she did this tea reading and, you know, it was really with proper tea leaves and a pot of tea and a proper cup. And how you do it isn't, you don't just stare into the bottom of, there's a thing that goes with it before. Emma said, never been to any camps or been in any groups, not even done in camping with um, when I was a kid with my family at Sealed Knot reenactment. Sealed, is that a historical thing, Sealed Knot? Is that a reenactment thing? Yeah, isn't it Sealed Knot? I've heard of them. Oh, it's something about camping, Emma, that just connects you back to nature, isn't there? I, th I yeah. think that's, I mean, you could go and all stay in a hotel and do weird and wonderful things, but I think there is something about 
you know, coming home and, and you know, thinking, I am filthy. <laughs> I need to get in that bath and get all this dirt out of my hair. There's something really primal about that. And mm. you kind of, you know, like Maslow and his hierarchy of needs. Yep. There's something about that in the campaign um that you you pair back what you actually need you take away the digital you take away the fancy clothes and you know I usually go wearing makeup and then don't put any on for the rest of the week you're lucky if I brush my hair do you know what I mean I brush my teeth and cursely brush of hair hair up in a ponytail and there's something about you don't so much worry what you look like um not what you smell like but you know you, you kind of all those things of unnecessary peel away like an onion till you're left with this core that is the essence of you, the essence of onion. <laughs> that <is laughs> That's just the bo. <laughs> uh, Fiona saying absolutely, I've missed it so much, and um, I have a new tent and a pre-love stuff. So excellent, Fiona. We'll have to get something planned. And Emma, yeah, it appeals to me, but I don't know anyone to do it with. You can do it with us, Emma. Where are you based, darling? Emma's Emma's. Um, I don't know where you're based. Sarah's saying helps break down want versus needs. Absolutely. And I think that's it. Uh, maybe new appropriate footwear and I'm good to go, says Fiona. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the thing. And it, but it, it can be, and we go for walks, don't we? Yeah. In our groups and circles. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, they're just, I say just, they, you know, you haven't got to go and see something amazing or go on some massive pilgrimage they're just a walk around a local park with like-minded people and like for example Jidge there's not a tree that Jidge doesn't know so we walk around a park at Sittingbourne and she was going oh that's a such and such and I'm going oh I never knew what that was and we were walking somewhere miles away from Milton Keynes ah well you'd be all right for the mercy in Emma that's not that far from there is it no yeah Yes, Emma, don't know you, and maybe it's time for that to change. Oh, <laughs> Fiona's accosting you. <laughs> but it's, you know, you can you can do these things where you go on, and actually I've got, um, on, like, you know, Naomi Manning, she's coming to talk to us soon about pilgrimages, because she does a pilgrimage every year. Uh, I mean, I don't know you yet, that's it. Don't, <laughs> don't scare her, <laughs> But, you know, she's going to talk about, she does some really big, expedition kinds of things um so she's coming to talk to us soon about that and you know her she and she inspires me to go and look at the things it's when you share things that you you get a bit of growth within yourself as well don't you yeah yeah and like you said with your see one do one and show one that kind of okay now I can do this and it's something to share isn't it that's a yeah. that's a rather rather good thing of personal growth isn't it definitely Ah, well, thank you very much, Jenny. It's been good, good fun reminiscing and um, probably scaring a few people off with my unbalanced growler and don't uh, spread the fat, but you know, we can't have them all. <laughs> <laughs> so next week I have got lovely Tina back and she is going to um, talk to us about dreams, dreams, their under understanding dreams, what they mean. And I've been having some really strange dreams lately. So if you've got some strange dreams, write them down and we'll, we'll quiz Tina's brain on them next week. Tina was talking to us before about the goddess path and Reiki. And yeah, she's she's always been into her dreams, but she's definitely going to, that's what she's going to be talking about. So my post next week will be about um, dreams and then we'll have Tina um, who's going to tell us more about them and uh yeah we can uh, find out why we dream the strangest things <laughs> sue Perrett, you lot keep me sane in a funny way <laughs> love you sue <laughs> and emma fiona's not really a stalker don't worry so <laughs> can you imagine the chaos that we get up to in a camp we all just sit around really quietly don't we with our hot chocolate I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. And we had one route where we had my homemade mead. We don't remember much. It wasn't you and me. That was me, Richard, and um, Tr Trina. And the, yeah, that, that and Jidge, and that, that got a little bit, little bit confusing by the end of the night. But it was good. It was fluffy. It was, it was warm and fluffy. <laughs> Quietly. Who doesn't believe we do quiet? Anyway, lovely to chat to you, Jenny. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for You're joining us, welcome. everybody. If you've got any questions or any comments please add them in and i will find some photos of me dressed as a black dog thank you very much for that jen <laughs> enjoyed every second sisters from my man cave oh cheers lonnie 
Thanks, Lodi. Lonnie, you must have some stories as well of camps. You have to put some of those in the comments. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll see you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye.